Hello everybody and welcome to this Cisco community event and to this Tag Tools Explains series session. My name is Hilda Tiaga and I am a community manager of the Cisco community and the host of today's event. So today we are going to talk about CLI Analyzer and how it can expand your tooth belt with the Tag Knowledge. Also, before we start, I would like to mention something about the Cisco community. Remember that this community is an online forum with over half a million members where you can get answers to your technical questions prior to opening cases with attack. Also, you can post, have a look at, or even answer questions and contribute with different content, such as documents, videos, blog, or on the discussion boards. The community can help you boost your career by becoming a top contributor and getting the technical community to know more about your expertise. Okay, so before we start, I would like to share with you just some couple of events and sessions that are related to this one that can be helpful to you. First of all, I would like to talk about the Ask Me Anything that is following this event. So this is a forum session that is connected to this live event. That is that if you have any question just after this session and you would like to post it with the live event already finished, well, you just can go there and place it out there, and the experts are going to help us out to answer them till uh, next Tuesday, December the 22nd. Also, if we have just sometimes too many questions during this live session, what we do is we post those, info those questions in this forum session. Also, if we need to validate information, we will post them just right there. So you can verify and have a look to all the different questions in this Ask Me Anything. All the information that I'm referring to you is going to be located uh, on the chat panel, okay, at the right side of your screen or on the tiny balls that are in your mobile device. Also, I would like to invite you to have a look to other support talk events that we have had before in this year. You can have a look to the Collaboration Solutions Analyzer that can help you out with all your collaboration products or to the, the tech bot that can help you out to automatize and optimize everything. All the information regarding these events are going to be available once again on the chat. Remember that these tools can help you not only to save time, but optimize all your devices, your network, and everything that you are managing just right there. Also, we would like to invite you to become an event top contributor. Uh, that means that uh, contribute a lot in the community. You can join, uh, provide sessions as well, or help others just to achieve their goals. Uh, as well, Please help us out to rate all the content that you find out in the Cisco community. That is, if you find something that is very helpful or is useful or that can give you some assistance, please don't forget to give it a helpful vote. That helps us not only to identify the quality content and to incentivize the participation, but also it helps us out for others to participate more. Also, remember, if you make a question, someone gave you an answer, and you find it useful, for instance, you can give a helpful vote. And as well, you can give an accepted solution if the comment that they gave you or the answer that they give you is correct. In that way, in future, people can find out the questions with the proper and right answers as well. And we also recognize everybody who does that. So well, just to get started, we'd like to introduce you to the experts that we have today. And I would like to start with Magnus. Hi, so everybody. Magnus, hello, Magnus. <laughs> uh, let me show you something about Magnus. Magnus started his career at Cisco in, 20, in 2006 as a tech engineer focusing on our security product line. He's now a principal engineer in the CX organization, still with a focus on security. His passion uh, around innovation, automation, has fueled his career and led him to create everything from new case handling systems to Cisco CX core automation problem detection system. He's rarely satisfied with the status quo and is always looking for the next thing to improve. He holds a CCI certification as well. So thank you so much for joining today, thank you. Magnus. Nice to see you. Thanks. Also, we have Nick. Uh, he's a technical leader in the Cisco Customer Experience Organization and specializes in core routing and switching software architectures. He works primarily on Cisco ISXE routers and switches and Cisco NX OS switches. He has spent more than two decades supporting a wide range of customers and loves solving complex problems. He holds a bachelor's degree in computer science from the North Carolina State University and a CCIE certification as well. Welcome, Nick, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Hilda. It's great to be here. Great. And we also have a couple of experts that are going to help us out to answer to all of your questions in the meantime that Magnus and Nick are presenting you to the CLI Analyzer. 
First, I will start with Scott. Scott is a software technical leader in the Cisco Customer Experience Organization. He currently works on the development of multiple platforms and web applications that deliver value to our customers and partners. He has been at Cisco for over two decades and working in broad areas of network management, voice technology, Cisco services, and others. Cisco has, uh, was the original architect and developer of the Cisco CLI Analyzer product. And he holds a bachelor's degree in computer engineering and a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the West Virginia University. So welcome, Scott, and thank you so much for being here, architect. Great. And finally, we have Dave. Uh, he's a technical leader from the product owner in the Cisco Customer Experience Organization. He currently works on defining product requirements for the development of multiple customer and partner-facing platforms and web applications. He has been in Cisco for over two decades as well and has worked in a wide variety of areas from the 7.7 and ACSs within a mid-range routing portfolio to product management with Cisco CX organization. He holds a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the Virginia Polytechnical Institute and a master's degree in electrical engineering from the North Carolina State University and an MBA from the Derding uh, Graduate School Business of the University of Virginia. So hi, Dave, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks. All right, so for all of you who like to have a look, a deep look to all the slides and all the information that the experts are presenting today, just uh, the deck is available already in the Cisco community. You can have a look there. You will find a link to go to those slides on the on the chat panel as well. And remember, if you find this information useful, don't forget to give a helpful post. Finally, uh, for all the questions that you have, please make sure that you submit it on the Q&A panel, also allocated in the right side of your screen or the middle dots in your WebEx uh, application in your mobile phone. That helps us out just to manage the questions easier and better. And please use the chat panel for any other logistics and questions, such as my audio is not working well, my screen's freezing, or I would like to contact someone in particular. Okay, so that is everything for this introduction. We hope you learn a lot from this tool. And I'm gonna give the microphone and the presenters ball to our experts so they can start sharing with us today. Thank you so much Thanks. for being with us. And please, Magnus. Thank you, Hilda, much appreciated. Well, hello, everybody. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Um, again, on this panel with me, I've got uh, some great uh, colleagues. You know, got, we've got Nick, Dave, and Scott. And uh, for those who are asking Q and A's, try and stump them. It's fun to do that. Shoot some crazy curveballs their way. They're there to answer your questions. Uh, but today we're going to be focusing on the Cisco CLI Analyzer and more specifically how the Cisco CLI Analyzer can expand your tool belt using TAC knowledge. Uh, if you want to click along and play along at home, there's a download link there on the slide. Uh, it is an application that you can download and install, supports, you know, multiple different operating systems. But uh, we're going to run through today's presentation talking about a handful of different aspects of the tool. First, we'll go through an overview and some of the history behind the Cisco CLI Analyzer. We'll look at features, some of the key notable features on the product. Uh, it does have a lot of features, so we're not gonna cover everything, but we'll cover the most useful and most uh, pertinent. Then we'll deep dive a bit further onto some of the tools uh, that are present within the Cisco CLI Analyzer and how you can use them to optimize and troubleshoot your network. And then obviously, just like every other good webinar, we're gonna finish it up with some tech or some Q and A between you guys and us, and we'll make it kind of an open forum to discuss any questions you have. So uh, next slide, thank you. Uh, first things first, let's level set our expectations here and see how many people out there have already used the Cisco CLI Analyzer. You'll see the little polling option show up in your uh, WebEx client or on your mobile device. Uh, this question will be up here for about a minute or so, but we just want to gauge how many people have actually tried the CLI analyzer. How many of you have uh, had pre-existing experience with it? So go ahead and answer. Got uh, about 40 seconds left before we move on from this point. And again, this just helps us understand, you know, what your prior experience has been with this platform. Now, I like, especially as a panelist, we're also asked the same polling question. So you know what, I'm gonna check yes, because I have used the Cisco CLI Analyzer before. So there we go. So you should be able to see the- There we go. Awesome, all right. So uh, about on average, about 30% of our audience have seen the Cisco CLI Analyzer or used it. 
45% haven't and another 24% haven't answered. Well, that's great because it means that we've got a very wide array of prior experience with this tool, and hopefully that's gonna to lead to some really great questions. Well, Nick, let's go on to the next slide. Uh, obviously, a CLI analyzer, what really is this? It's a terminal emulator, it's a client, it's an SSH client you can download and use to manage your devices. But the big question becomes why would Cisco do this? Seems kind of strange to get into the realm of creating a terminal emulator. What's the value add here? Well, a little bit of a history lesson to first start. Here in Cisco, in TAC, or now known as CX, around 2014, we really started to dip our feet into automated problem detection, troubleshooting, and remediation by looking at customer data and running an assortment of tooling and capabilities written by CX and TAC against that data to highlight issues, highlight problems. We discovered that this was of significant value to our engineers. It helped them troubleshoot issues. We realized what could we do to make this even better? We could bring that capability externally for direct customer consumption. So around 2015, we started down this journey focusing on the ASA security product line, creating tooling and systems that you can use to diagnose your problems. Realizing that value, we branched out around 2016 to other platforms, iOS, NXOS, UCS. But why did we really do it? Again, our TAC engineers are the competitive differentiator for CX. The knowledge and experience is unsurpassed. And we recognize that their knowledge, if applied to customer data at scale, can really help drive problem resolution. We have hundreds of engineers around the globe who have special product knowledge and are passionate about creating digital content to solve problems at scale. And we're bringing those best in-class analytics and insights to your fingertips through tools such as the Cisco CLI Analyzer, which we're talking about today, but a handful of other types of modalities, My Diagnostic Bridge, and in the near future, the CX Portal. Nick, if you go to the next slide, we started again with the ASA as our initial security platform to develop this for, build all the intellectual capital, build all the signatures. But we've since branched out to a wide array of products. Uh, I'm not gonna read the whole list here, but a couple of notable ones is we're in the data center space with DNAC and UCS, uh, touching just about every networking device with iOS and iOS XE, uh, as well as wireless with AirOS, as well as APC OS. So there's a whole host of different operating systems that we support as part of the CLI analyzer for you to run your data, run your diagnostics through, and then get those valuable insights. So I mentioned earlier during the intro that the platform has a ton of features, and we're not gonna detail every single one, but we wanna touch on a couple of key ones that you can use in general to help monitor, manage, and maintain your network. Looking at some of those features that we like to say augment and accelerate your job, help you do your job easier, the ones we're going to talk about today are session sharing, which is the ability for you to sh sort of screen share or CLI share with another person running the CLI analyzer, something we refer to as contextual help and highlighting, which I relate to as Tony Stark's Iron Man heads up display, where you get contextual information about the output being displayed beyond the simple CLI. Then we'll look at multi-search highlighting, session logging, a pretty core common concept, coverage validation, some contextual tooling that's built into the CLI analyzer to help put some easy to use net admin like tools at your fingertips, uh, some Cisco case open and attachment handling capabilities and device tagging. So the first one that I want to talk about is actually contextual help and highlighting. We call it CHH for short. The idea behind contextual help and highlighting is the CLI itself is quite complex. You may run commands and get a whole host of output. Some of it is very human consumable. Some of it looks like it's written by a developer and makes absolutely no sense at all. But as tech engineers, we've spent a lot of our careers learning about what all the different output on our CLIs mean. And contextual help and highlighting is our way of taking that knowledge and putting it directly into the CLI output as it's displayed on the screen. This is a capability that's in the Cisco CLI analyzer, 
And under the hood, what actually happens is as the content from a show command or whatever you've entered in on the CLI scrolls across the screen, we are pattern matching to key terms, phrases, variables, values, et cetera, that are in that output. And what we highlight are inline elements. Those things could be best practice, improvement opportunities, errors that need remediation, troubleshooting pointers, like how best to configure or modify something on the CLI, as well as links to useful documentation. Now, some people look at this and say, are these just regurgitating documentation content that I can just go Google? Not exactly, because what we do is we have this written by TAC engineers who take their own interpretation of what uh, a counter or something may mean and put that in there as that useful insight. It runs on your configuration, runs on show commands, and all sorts of different kind of output as it comes across. We'll look at some demos of this a little bit later. Multi-search highlighting is pretty much what it sounds like, as opposed to just being able to view or search for one key field or item at a time. You can search for up to five simultaneous terms and visually see them differentiated in your UI. That allows you to easily spot common things or relationships between outputs uh, or terms that are in your CLI. It's regex based, uh, you know, does uh, case sensitivity or not, as well as, you know, we can match up to five individual terms. And next, tell us about contextual menus. Great. So, so uh, when we think about contextual menus, I think one of the great things about having a, a terminal emulator, uh, the ability to SSH from something that Cisco's produced, is that we know what's going to be important for your job when it comes to troubleshooting, when it comes to kind of your day-to-day -day interaction with the devices. So with the contextual menus, we have the ability to take and highlight something in the terminal and then have menus that will drive actions based on what it is that was highlighted. So we'll show you some examples of this in a minute, but uh, a couple of key ones. The serial number validation, for example, will do a coverage check. With IP addresses, you have the option to ping or to trace route or to SSH or telnet to a device based on the IP address. Um, any term in your terminal, you can select that and you can do a, a, add it as a search term. You can do a search on cisco.com if there's something that you don't understand. Um, you can also highlight it and put it directly into a support case. And so we'll show you how some of these things can work. And one of them that I really like is the opportunity to add favorite commands. So if there's something that you really want to, to go ahead and, you know, use regularly, the favorite commands option is going to give you that capability. Magnus also mentioned the option to uh, use session sharing. And we'll show you in a demo of how this exactly works. But in a COVID world that we're living in where a lot of people are remote, this has been something that's been really helpful to be able to put people in the same space and have them interact. And that could be used for troubleshooting. It could be used for a teaching tool where, you know, you're explaining something and you want to show someone in the same terminal. You think about that. We're trying to put you in the same space where you can interact with the device together, and you can have that learning experience together. The next tool we're going to look at here, the next uh, feature is the uh, opportunity to attach and open cases. Now, this is something that requires coverage, and so as you, uh, as you do the coverage check, it's going to validate whether or not your serial numbers are on contracts before it will allow you to uh, open a case, for example. But if you've gone in and opened a case previously, you do that through the support case manager, and you put in some details there. What we do with, these, uh, with this feature is we bring that to you right in your terminal. So as you're interacting with it in the terminal, you can go ahead and update you know, outputs into the case. You can collect data that the TAC engineer may, may want to have on there as well. Uh, this is something that I'm going to go ahead and just put a video on, and we'll kind of talk you through what this looks like because it's difficult to demo without a, without a serial number on a contract. So the first thing we're going to see here is the, a case open option. So when we use the case open option in the device terminal, with the device pane, you can go in and select a device that's covered, and there's a briefcase in the bottom right-hand corner. You can see there by clicking that brief, briefcase, I have an open a new case option. When I click that open new case option, what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and reach out to Cisco and bring you a, a window where you're going to select the technology, the sub-technology, 
and put in a description of the problem that you're experiencing with this device. Once that's completed, you'll go ahead and click Submit, and it will open the case for you and bring you back to this window where you can go ahead and collect output directly from the device. So a show tech will be run, and it will be directly uploaded to that case that you just opened. Now, maybe you've got a case already open on a device, and you just want to upload a file. Maybe there's a file that you have on your machine. You've collected some logging. With the File Attach option from this same window, you'll go and click on the briefcase, and then select the case that you want to upload to, and select Attach File where you can go and select the file and upload that directly to the case. So again, like we've been talking about, we're trying to put these tools that are important for your day-to-day -day use directly at your fingertips, where you can interact with your cases, your devices, everything in one pane, and make things as simple as possible for you. So we're going to go ahead and switch uh, gears for a second here and give you a demo of some of the features that we've talked about in the CLI Analyzer itself. Now, the first thing that I want to show you here is something that we call the master password. Now, the master password option is one that protects your credentials and allows you to store within the tool credentials for every individual device. And if you don't have that and you don't know the master password, then it's not going to give someone else access to those credentials. So I'll go ahead and put in my master password here. That unlocks all of the credentials. You'll see over here on the side, we have the option to log in with our CTO user ID so that it's got access to any contracts that I have access to. And then we'll go ahead and just take a look at some of the, the features here. So the first thing we'll look at is the settings. In the settings pane, this is where you would go if you wanted to configure some of your favorite commands. And those commands are put in per device type. So you may go in and select, you know, a certain operating system that you're running, and you can add or edit. We've added, populated some in there by default. You can change the priority. When you're interacting with your device, you can call on those favorite commands very easily by, by pressing Alt-F. The next thing I want to show you here is over on the right-hand side, you can see the logging option. Now, with, uh, with logging, I've got it set up as default, and I've got it set so that it'll log the IP host name as the file name in this directory. So every time that I log in, it's automatically logging. If we jump over here to the security pane, you'll see where you can enable master password. And by turning that on, again, that's going to protect your credentials for each individual device and store them within the CLI analyzer. Another feature that I really like here is the credential profiles, where if you have certain uh, uh, credentials for certain devices, you can configure a profile for each of those, and then you can set the default credential profile so that when you create a new device, it defaults to that one. Over here, you can see some of the display options. Magnus will show you some of the CHH. If you want to turn that off or you want to disable certain levels of CHH, you can do that here. And lastly, you've got uh, an option to go ahead and back up and restore your, C, uh, your CLI analyzer configuration. So let me jump over here to the devices. Now, one of the features that we uh, mentioned is tagging and filtering capabilities. So I've got a lot of devices here, and by device type, you can go through and filter down that list very quickly. So you can see just the iOS devices, or you can look at just the ASAs that you've got configured and, and credentials for. In addition, if you want to use the tags, you can select a tag that exists, or maybe I've got some devices here for my main campus. And I put that in as a search term. Now all I see is those three devices. And you can go through and edit one by one if you want to add new tags. You can do that here. Uh, maybe I want to put in you know, my favorite router. And I want to give that a tag. So I've just added that tag to this device. I click Save. Now I've got an option where I can just see my favorites. Another thing that I really like from the device pane is the ability to go in and do bulk actions. So if you want to go in and do a bulk action, you can add tags to a whole group of devices, or you can delete the tags. Or one that, that we'll use right now is go ahead and connect into each of those devices. So that's popped open SSH sessions to each of these, and you'll notice the credential profile is already there. I can simply click connect for each of these three devices and bring up sessions to each of the devices. And so now I'm in my Nexus switch. 
I'm also in the ASA, and I'm also in the CSR. And the device, because we have the credentials, we have the enable password as well, it goes ahead and executes that. And the CLI analyzer is going to recognize exactly what type of device that is and display tools according to that device type. Now, uh, Magnus mentioned the session sharing, and we want to show you kind of what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and share my session to the ASA here. And you'll notice that what happens is you get an IP address and a session key. Now, Magnus is going to go into new session, and he'll put in, instead of SSH, a shared session and type in my IP address instead of the device IP address. And he'll then be prompted for the session key. As soon as he yep. puts that in, did you get it in there, Magnus? Four, seven, seven, nine. Okay, I got it. So I then get a prompt that determines whether I want to give him read-write access or read-only access. So I'm going to give him read-write access and authorize that. And you'll notice that Magnus shows up here at the top as a connection and is able to type directly in my terminal. So he's, he's there interacting with this ASA at the same time that I'm interacting with it. Now, if I wanted to change that, I could go in and uh, either disconnect him or revoke the write permissions, and that would uh, prevent him from being able to interact with that ASA, or I can stop sharing altogether. So, Magnus, do you want to talk to us about the uh, CHH here on the ASA for just a minute, and we'll, we'll uh, sure. be able to take a look at some of those features? I think what's great here is we're going to leverage screen sharing. I'm going to run commands on Nick's ASA, and I can explain to him what we're seeing as we go through them. So I mentioned earlier when talking about contextual help and highlighting that there are certain things that we can identify that could be problems in your configuration or problems that you need to address. So on this ASA, and I know how Nick configures his firewalls, if I run a command and I'm looking, for example, at his routing table, I'm immediately shown that there is this orange line that is indicating something is different about it. And it's easily visible and with one click, a little contextual modal pops up that explains why we've decided to highlight this. In this case, uh, having a specific uh, administrative distance of 255 doesn't actually install the route and the routing table. We typically see this as a misconfiguration when customers have it present. So we have put that tech knowledge into the tool to notify uh, that this is uh, sort of the case. But where contextual help, putting the help in contextual help, really comes into play is in those weird sort of diagnostic commands. For example, show ASP drop on our firewalls uh, gives you a lot of information about what the product is doing to traffic, what it's dropping, but then it gives you only these strange little uh, developer-based titles, such as uh, ACL drop. Is that only for access lists, or is it for everything on the platform? So we give a whole list of uh, tack insights around each one of these kind of outputs or counters. Another command that I really like to look at is show interface on the firewall. And show interface, just like on our iOS products, gives you a lot of counters around why packets may have been dropped, why packets may be encountering errors. And one that Nick has highlighted right there indicates an overall packet drop count. And there are not enough hands on this conference bridge right now to count how many times customers have asked, why is my interface dropping packets? What do I do to fix it? I don't want to drop packets. But yes, you do. It's a firewall. That's what you bought it for, right? So we put that knowledge around the fact that it's normal to have those kind of drops happen. And CHH allows us to show that very, very easily. I'm going to go ahead here and, and click on the documentation link, and, and we'll show you also that directly from the terminal, we can pop open troubleshooting guides. We can show you how to take this to the next level as you're working with uh, CHH and understanding what's going on on the device. And in this particular one, you can see that this takes us to a packet drop uh, guide where it talks about what the output is, what we're seeing, and, and how we might troubleshoot that. All right, Nick, why don't so, you show us um, some stuff on maybe a different platform? I saw you have the CSR up there. Is there some good CHH there? Yeah, so if we look at the CSR, um, again, you know, we can run various commands. You can notice that there's highlighting that occurs in different parts of the command, uh, whether that's the reason for the reboot or the amount of memory or things like that. You've got a lot of different uh, options there. 
If I were to look at uh, show logging as an example, in the show logging, uh, in this lab device, I, I've got uh, some memory allocation failures that have occurred. And so you can see here a description about how you would troubleshoot that, as well as the specific commands that would be executed in order for us to help you diagnose that problem. And so we're putting this right directly in your terminal so that as you're interacting with that, you have the ability to you know, take it to the next step, take your troubleshooting to the next level. Another uh, thing that we had talked about here is uh, the contextual menus. And so let me just show you, if we're looking at, uh, say, the show version, and I notice a serial number here, I may highlight that serial number. And then right-clicking provides me with this contextual menu. And I can check the device coverage right from that serial number in my terminal. Now, uh, maybe I'm looking at the configuration And I notice that I've got a next hop router or an ASA or something that's next to, to this device. I can select this IP address. And if we've got some problem with connectivity or we're troubleshooting an issue, right clicking on that will provide me the opportunity to do a ping right there. I can validate that reachability is there. Maybe I want to get into that device. And so I open an SSH session. And when I do this, it's going to recognize that I already have credentials and everything configured for that ASA, and I can just select use that device, and it will take me directly to that session where I can now interact directly with that, that adjacent device in an SSH session in my terminal. Um, another thing that we talked about briefly is if you've got some term that you, you know, want to take a look at closer, maybe... Uh, Maybe you've got a reset reason here, and you're not sure what this reset reason means. And so I'm going to use this as a search on Cisco.com, and just selecting it from the contextual menu, it'll take me to Cisco.com, and it'll show me all of the search results for that particular reset reason. So I can see a few different bug IDs or other uh, documents that may be helpful in troubleshooting there. And lastly, if we look at uh, – if we look at – the search terms, it may be that I want to see every hit that I have on a particular uh, term. Maybe I want to see everywhere that match protocol shows up. I can highlight this, and I can add this as a search term in the terminal itself. And so now, in blue, everywhere that I have match protocol is highlighted. Magnus mentioned that this option will provide you the ability to put in a regex as well. And so maybe there's... Uh, a couple of interfaces. Yeah, let's go for an IP address range. I think that's a fun one. So let's put this in this here. This will test your regex knowledge too, Nick. One, that's right. Now remember, if we're going to turn on regexes, you got to treat this whole thing like a regex. So I want to find everything that's in this subnet, 198.18.1, and I want to enable regex, and I'll add this as a search term. Now you'll see that everything that has 198.18.1. anything, so I have 163 there. If I scroll down further, you may notice that my interface config, 161 is down here, 163 again in the show interface, and yet this IP address on the interface, 192.168, is not showing up. And so you can enable a regex and use that to find items that are similar. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, Magnus, why don't we jump back and look at another polling question. Does that sound good? Sounds like a plan. So, polling question number two. Of those features that uh, Nick and I have just covered, what feature do you think will be the most helpful in your day-to-day -day job? So, you got a couple of choices, contextual help in highlighting, also known as THH. That's the inline pop-ups. Multi-search highlighting, which Nick just demoed, being able to look at pattern-based searches throughout the CLI, contextual menus giving you basically one or two-click access to common tools or items based on what you've highlighted, uh, session sharing, which I think is the most useful, uh, and then also the case open and attach tools, allowing you to seamlessly get data into uh, TAC cases and uh, open cases based on your product coverage. So that question's available. It'll be up like uh, the prior one for just about a minute, plus or minus.
Then after we go through those results, we're going to take a look at some of the more in-depth tools, uh, some of the more product-specific capabilities that are present in the CLI Analyzer. All right. Very interesting. So uh, contextual help and highlighting is definitely a strong uh, front runner, uh, as well as, I think, in second place, session sharing and uh, the case and handling. Case open tools, oh. yeah. Very nice, very, very cool. nice. Well, this, this kind of insight is useful for us to make sure to focus on those parts of the product whenever we're thinking about new features or capabilities, that those are the kind of things that are the most useful. Well, Nick, let's uh, walk our way into the next section here, which is the more specific product-based tools. Um, on the next slide, we're going to highlight some of these. Uh, the ones in bold, we're going to do a little bit of a live uh, demo and display of, but there's a lot of different tools. And as Nick showed when he was in the CLI analyzer, when he was on a product, there was a list of capabilities up at the top of the screen. That's your tool belt of different tech created knowledge infused systems that'll help you troubleshoot your network. We're going to look at system diagnostics, file analysis, uh, the zone based firewall visualizer, uh, some packet tracing and capturing capabilities, as well as TAC data collection. The last four are there. You guys can try them out. That's the traceback and crash analyzers, some routing and multicast uh, analysis tools, policy cleanup wizards, as well as some VPN uh, tooling around land-to-land uh, -land VPN checks. So the first one we want to talk about is the system diagnostics. I think this is probably one of the most powerful tools that we have in the Cisco CLI analyzer and what it is under the hood. Do you remember when I was talking about the history of the Cisco CLI analyzer? We had all of this knowledge and passion to automate and problem to detect internally here at Cisco. We wanted to bring it externally. This is that problem detection externally. The system diagnostics tool will take specific data from your device, like a show tech or a specific series of commands, send it over an SSL connection back to our servers to do an in-depth analysis looking for problems, best practice violations, hardware faults, bugs, you name it, we're looking for those kind of things. Thousands of checks are performed, immediate results are shown to you, along with actionable next steps and additional insights. There's a wide range of feature checks that go on, validations of best practices, and you can easily rerun that check after trying to fix something. For example, if it tells me that I've got a bad route, I can go fix the route, rerun the system, and be validated that I have successfully resolved that issue. The second thing, file analysis. It's just like that, but without the live device connection. System diagnostics is a tool that's run on the device and the commands are run live. File analysis is the same intellectual capital and content and checks, but based off of a static file that you maybe have already gathered. It analyzes the device without active connection, provides an option to either copy paste or upload a file, supports zipped bundles, and is limited to about five gigs. So when you start thinking about some of those other platforms we support like NXOS or UCS, those diagnostic bundles are significant and they can be uploaded and analyzed using this tool. The zone-based firewall visualizer, this one is a little pet project of mine. Um, the idea behind it was I didn't like trying to unwind customer configurations about zone-based firewall. If you've ever configured it on an iOS device, it's a series of nested policy maps and class maps to try and describe a security policy. On the CLI, it's ugly. So the idea behind a zone-based firewall visualizer is to take that and up-level it to something easily consumable. For example, here, it's telling me about a zone pair, which is the top-level category in iOS uh, firewall. Underneath there, there's a policy map, and related to that is a class map. And underneath that, there's an access group and then an action that is taken. As opposed to trying to piece the CLI together, I'm given it in a very visual fashion, easy to diagnose and debug. The next one we're going to talk about for a minute here is the packet capture tool. And I love that Magnus mentioned that the zone-based firewall was kind of a pet project of his. Uh, we get really passionate in the TAC, and we get to be able to really get our hands on and see how we can make your job easier. And the packet capture tool was just that. Uh, I, I have a session at Cisco Live where we talk about packet capture tools across all of these different devices that we're talking about. And in that session, we found that the syntax is different. You know, customers sometimes interact with multiple ones. You don't have just a security uh, admin and just a router admin. And so in that kind of context, we decided it would be really helpful to create a tool 
that would give you a common interface for capturing packets, make it really easy for you, and then allow you to go in and configure the other bells and whistles if you wanted something more specific. And so that's what we've done with the packet capture tool. We'll show you a, a demo of this in just a minute. But the, the main idea, again, was a, a uniform capture interface. And the other is the fact that we wanted you to be able to download a ca packet capture directly from the terminal. So we'll show you how that works in just a second. Another one that we'll talk about is the uh, TAC data collection. I don't know if anybody's ever been uh, on a case with a TAC engineer who sent you an email and there's a whole list of commands. And that list of commands is really hard for you to, you know, be able to go in and type and get the syntax just exactly right. Um, and, and sometimes you copy and paste and it gets messed up. With the TAC data collection tool, the TAC engineer can send you an automated email with that list of commands. You come into the CLI analyzer with the ID that is identified there, uh, and you'll be able to collect those commands directly through the terminal without having to type anything. It simply executes the commands, uploads them to the case, and then that output is available for the TAC engineer. When that happens, I mentioned an automated email. That email will look something like this. So it'll say, dear customer, uh, on this particular case, we'd like to collect some commands. Here's a couple of options. Go download the CLI analyzer. Here's a demo of how that works. Or you can go ahead and collect it manually, and here's the list of commands. So we're going to jump directly in the, into the uh, demo of the TAC data collection tool to start here. So I'm going to go over to my Nexus switch. And along the top, you have this whole row of tools. And so I'll click on the TAC data collection tool. And based on my user ID, I have a case that's open. And on that case, you'll go ahead and notice that the TAC data collection tool has been uh, initiated, where I've got a list of specific IDs related to cases. So I'm going to select this one for the Nexus and click Continue. When I do this, the commands that the TAC engineer requested are retrieved. And it'll show me these commands right in the window here. So I can decide, you know what, all of these are okay, we should go ahead and execute them. As soon as I click continue, that's gonna collect one by one each of those commands. And you'll notice the terminal scrolling in the background there. It's gonna collect those, log them to a file, and directly upload those to the case. Now the TAC engineer will have them at his fingertips. He can move forward with the troubleshooting that he requested, uh, those commands that he requested to, to troubleshoot further. And you can uh, know that they're already on the case. You don't have to go and re-upload them or find the file or do any of that. Once that's completed, you'll get a result window that will show you that the commands have been executed. I can expand here the specific commands that are there. And if you want to get a, a, an output there, that particular file, I can click download, and that file is uh, accessible for 24 hours. So we'll go ahead and close this one out. Let's take and, a look at uh, uh, one of the system diagnostics. The yeah, let's pop over to that one. So uh, I'm still here living in the uh, background of, uh, hi, Nick, of your uh, ASA. Um, but what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, do the system diagnostics option for this ASA. Okay. Uh, what we do with so the ASA one specifically is it runs a show tech command. So you'll see it will first run a handful of commands. Uh, again, term pager zero, so we can collect all of it very easily. Show tech to get all the diagnostic information. And then hunt that over to Cisco. In the background, all of those thousands of signatures and analytic modules that I was talking about earlier created by TAC engineers are being run against this data. It will take a few moments to come back, and then we'll get prompted or have a little pop-up here. There it is. And it's showing us, there's the most recent one, uh, first off, his ASAV does not have the right amount of memory allocated to it. That is a high severity problem. So you'll notice there are different levels of issue that we are highlighting. So super severe issues come in red as a danger. Warnings that are, you know, something you want to be aware of and definitely address very soon come in orange. In this case, this is one of my favorite bugs. This is a great bug we uh, have detected here on Nick's uh, infrastructure where the box will go completely silent in 213 days. Really nasty bug. Google it. It's uh, Make sure you guys don't run into this on your firewalls. But then you'll also see an assortment of other checks beneath it. For example, there's the ignored static route with the metric of 255 that we saw earlier. So here we're seeing some CHH-related items also shown in this sort of diagnostic. 
and then a whole bunch of informational checks, things that might be best practice violations, opportunities for him to improve something in his configuration, or calculators to tell you something about your device that it might not be able to tell you on its own. Uh, Nick, do you know where in your configuration that route outside issue is? You know, I mean, I've got a capture of it. We could look at that whole capture, I guess. Why don't you just click on the uh, eyeball there and get a quick jump to the output that was gathered and where in the configuration it was. So oh, you saw it flashed that. orange okay. there. The idea is that when you are told about something using a system diagnostic like that, we want to provide the context around what we saw in your output that alarmed us and told us to, you know, kind of in, gave us the impetus to tell you about the problem. Uh, and then if you read through those notes, there's also actionable next steps for Nick to take to remedy that. And he can rerun this tool as many times as he wants in order to get, you know, additional checks, try something to fix it, and then validate that it worked. Now, if we wanted to do this on a, a file, a static file, that's where the file analysis comes in. And so I'll just click over here on file analysis, and I can click in the pane here and select my CSR show tag. And then I can start an analysis on a device that is not actively executing those commands. Instead, it's uploading that file to Cisco. And as soon as it's completed, it will bring me back to a similar results window for the file analysis. And you can see here within that file analysis uh, pane, the, the results pane, that again, we've got multiple items here that are warning level. We've got some that are errors, and so it shows you the specific bug, bugs that I may be susceptible to, as well as some that are a little less uh, severe, where we've got some uh, best practices, things that you might want to go and change. And you have the ability in your terminal through the system diagnostic to execute it, make the necessary changes, and then run it again and see the results in the new results window. It'll just create a new entry each and every time. One thing that people so do that's very you. interesting with the file analysis that I'd like to mention is some people say, well, what kind of bugs am I going to run into if I upgrade? Well, if you take your show tech, modify it so that it reflects that you have done an upgrade, you know, change the version parameters that are present in there, people rerun it through the system diagnostics to see are there going to be new bugs that pop up. And it's a great way to do some pre-checks before you make actual changes in your live environment. Nick, why don't we take so a look real jump. quick at uh, the zone-based firewall capabilities? Yeah, jump onto the CSR. I'm here now, yeah. okay. So if you uh, go to the tool belt and, again, execute the uh, oper the uh, what is it listed there as? Should be zone-based firewall visualizer. There you go. Okay. Again, some more commands are going to be gathered. Uh, and I think this one's pretty cool just to look at the way that we nest and visualize those capabilities. And you saw a lot of that scroll by. All those policy maps I referred to earlier that are very complex and hard to piece together. There we go. So with a click, we see that there are now three different zone pairs, and each one is documented. So Nick can click through and understand exactly how the components fit in together. Uh, we think this is pretty cool. We'd love to build this out for other sorts of complex uh, configurations, um, but this is the one that we have right now for iOS. So the last one that we're going to show you here today is uh, the packet capture tool, and we'll just go ahead and run this on the CSR. So the first thing that I do is click on packet capture, and this will be a similar workflow on your Nexus products, your ASAs, anything that uh, the packet capture tool is supported on. When you go in here, you'll be presented with the capture tool that we're going to use on this particular system and a few different workflows. So you can see here I have the option to configure a capture, clear a buffer, stop a, and decode, or remove existing captures. So I'm going to select configure a capture to start. And uh, while this is running, I'm going to go ahead and just give you a disclaimer. I'm going to run this capture for all traffic. We put in here some sample IP addresses because we don't want you to go ahead and uh, cause problems in the network if you, you know, configure it for all traffic. But I'm just going to do this since this is a lab, so don't try this at home. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just configure it with a very broad statement of what I want to find in that capture and click continue. Now, this is determining the commands that need to be executed, and it gives those to me in this pop-up. If I click continue, those commands will be applied to my device. Now, the neat thing about this is, if you configure it for a specific host, maybe you find one host that you want to capture, and you decide you want to change that capture, 
We're going to give you in the results window the specific commands that were executed to configure that capture, and you can go in and modify those commands if you'd like. You could create another line in that access list, for example. Now that I've done that, this capture is running on this device, and because it's a lab, I've got traffic running continuously. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Packet Capture again because I'd like to analyze this and show you what it looks like. And it'll pop up with the same dialogue I had before, but this time I'm going to click Stop and Decode a Capture. I click Continue, and it's going to determine which captures are active on the device and which ones I have the option to decode. Once that's happened, I'll go ahead and select the capture that I'd like to decode and click Continue. And it's going to collect the necessary outputs to be able to decode that capture. In addition to that, it's going to turn it into a PCAP. Now, if you've interacted with some of our capture tools, you know that sometimes you've got to set up an FTP server. You've got to go in and transfer the file over to that. We wanted this to be as simple as possible, and so we're giving it to you right in the terminal. So the first section I have here is the top talkers. And you can see in this capture, I've got a number of top talkers based on layer two, layer three, and layer four. I can see the decode of the first 250 packets. Now, I captured 456 during that capture, but we're only showing you 250 just to give you a, a kind of quick sampling of what's there in the capture. And the last thing that I'm going to click on here is a download where I can click on this file and right from my terminal, it pops up, and I'm able to download this file directly to my machine. I can analyze it offline and, and be able to do that without having to set up an FTP server or a TFTP server or anything like that to transfer that over. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back to the slide deck, and we'll give you uh, just our last polling question here. Thinking about the tools that we've discussed today, how much time do you think on a daily basis the CLI analyzer is going to save you? Is it... 0 to 15 minutes, 15 to 30, 30 to 45, or greater than an hour a day or, or per use. So we'll leave that polling question open for just a minute. I think the CLI analyzer for, for us is something that is very useful. It's something that I use on a, a daily and weekly basis. And, and I think that as you get into it and you start using it in your environment, you'll find that there are a lot of great tools out there, even some that we didn't talk about today, that will be helpful for you. So we just encourage you to get your hands on it and try it out. And there's a feedback option. If you want to give us feedback, we'd love to hear it. So you guys should be able to see the results from the polling now. Fantastic. So we're looking at uh, the majority of 15 to 30, 30 to 45. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And uh, to just reinforce what Nick said, the more you use it, the more you'll find, you know, how it best fits in with your existing workflow. Um, and, you know, again, he mentioned that there's a feedback link in all of the different tools. Use it. Let us know what you think about the tool. Let us know what kind of problems you may run into or if there are ways we can make it better for you. We're always trying to find better ways to make your outcomes easier to achieve. And that's what we're here for. So I think, uh, do we have any questions that we want to take live? Did you, uh, we'll ask our panelists here to just unmute if we've got uh, some live questions that you want to throw we, out at us. We do have many. <laughs> Okay. If we so, don't get to your question, remember the Ask Me Anything session. We'll make sure that we address the questions there. All right. So the first one could be like, can we use this tool completely offline to analyze our Cisco MDS switches for show tech support? Yeah, that's a good question. So the CLI analyzer itself will work offline where you can get into the device, you can use it as a terminal, any of the tools, however, are going to require a connection back to Cisco to be able to utilize those. So if you don't have access from, uh, from wherever you're doing your troubleshooting to get to Cisco, that's where you're going to want to download the file and use the file analysis to be able to upload that. And to, to follow on for that with what Nick is saying is CLI Analyzer is just a conduit between the Cisco technology, uh, the the, the tech resources that these developer engineers have put into the system and your device. So CLI Analyzer does not have any of this logic. It's not, um, it doesn't ship with it. Um, one of the questions was, well, what if a command is incorrect, as an example? And I suggested that, you know, that you go to the feedback and you let these engineers know that because they control that system that does this processing. So to Nick's point, CLI Analyzer asks this tech knowledge system 
I'm on an ASA, what do I do? And it's going to say, run show interfaces. And so CL Analyzer just does it, and it gives the data. And then the next set of commands are asked. So unfortunately, give, I mean, it's fortunately and unfortunately, because un, unfortunately it means CL Analyzer will not be able to do a system diagnostic when you're not connected to the public Internet, but it also means you do not need to upgrade for those systems to be corrected. If there's a missing command or an incorrect command or new features added to system diagnostic, um, and a point, point of example, when we first started this, I think like six years ago, ASA did something like 170 checks. Maybe it was 165. And over, like over a year, all of a sudden, that ballooned to like, say, the mid-200s. And I never had to upgrade my CLI analyzer. And all of a sudden, I got new checks. And yeah, to just kind of great question. piggyback on that comment to that, I mean, there's uh, a significant motion within CX to focus on digitization, CX being in customer experience here at Cisco, TAC, et cetera, uh, to digitize problem detection. And the best signatures, the most useful ones, the ones that are validated, uh, make their way externally into tools like this. And, you know, you might run the tool one day and get, you know, 100 checks. The next day, there might be 105, right, as we're constantly refreshing and updating those external libraries of analytics and signatures, you get those automatically with those system diagnostic runs. So we are kind of short on time, but there's another question. Is is packet capturing supporting on iOS XR? Yeah, that's a good question. So iOS XR is one that we've received the request for. It's not one that we've been able to build in and, and uh, code yet. And the reason for that, one of the primary reasons, is the fact that uh, when it comes to iOS XR, we recognize we're dealing with very, very high volumes of traffic, and the capture tools that are there are not ones that we want to just put at a click. We want to make sure that the engineer that's utilizing those capture commands is very familiar with the device and, and the implications of running those capture tools. So we haven't coded that for iOS XR yet. Uh, it may be something that we decide to add in the future, but at this time it's not supported. All right. Well, thank you so much. Due to the time, we are we're gonna need to close down the session. But uh, I can see the comments just right here saying that this has been an amazing session, and I really appreciate and want to thank all of you, uh, Dave, Scott, Nick, and Magnus, for such an incredible presentation. So, if we also remember that if we were not able to answer to your question right now, it's because of the time and because we have just too many questions as well. But thank you so much for joining today. You will be able to find the answer and even make new questions in this Ask Me Anything following this session. This will be available till December the 22nd. That is next Tuesday. Also, uh, we invite you to have a look to the, the Cisco community channels uh, on social media that we have. There you can find more information about these support talks and any other new tech explain events. We're available as well on YouTube, on the application for all the customers and partners, and on LinkedIn. If you would like to find more information about Forte IT trainings, events, and all the sessions that are coming related to these tech support tools and any other architectures and technologies, please don't forget to have a look to the calendar at the Cisco community. And well, finally, also we'd like to invite you to please uh, take some time to fill out a survey that is coming out just after uh, you close this, this event session. That helps us all to find out if we are doing well, uh, how, where can we improve, how did you find this session, and also what kind of topics or tools you would like to see in upcoming events. So please help us all to fill out that survey. And well, thank you very much for joining us today. For those who don't know, uh, this is the last event of the year. Uh, we are closing you know, all the events from Cisco community with this event. So thank you so much to all the experts and the audience that joined us today. And I wish you all guys have great holidays and happy seasons. Thank you, Magnus, Nick, uh, Scott, and Dave as well. You're Thanks, welcome. Hilda. Have a great one, everybody. You See you next year then. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everybody. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye.